This week's Game Boy game is Adventure Island 2. Now, I've never played an Adventure Island game before. I saw them a lot in, like, Nintendo Power and magazines growing up, and they always looked really cool. Um, but yeah, I never played one before. So, this was my first experience. Let's see, what did I think of this game? So, Adventure Island 2, it's kind of confusing. The Game Boy game is apparently almost a direct port of the third NES game. So, Adventure Island 2 for Game Boy is a port of Adventure Island 3 for the NES. Uh, yeah, I never played one growing up. I always wanted to. It is a side-scroller run-and-jump game, which, you know, there's countless of those. But I do think this Adventure Island, if uh, I assume that this game is similar to the other games in the Adventure Island series, and if that's the case, I think Adventure Island has uh, enough of its own unique gameplay for it to stand on its own as a uh, unique side-scroller platformer. So for the Game Boy game, <laughs> first of all, the way this game looks, I absolutely adore the graphics in this game. They are, well, first of all, they're unique. I've never seen uh, I've never seen stylized graphics like this before. They are incredibly crisp and clear. Uh, the sprites are huge. The backgrounds, like all the elements in the backgrounds, the uh, the hero, the, the player character, the enemies, the obstacles, the backgrounds are all very big and clear, easy to make out, easy to see what's in the foreground, what's in the background. Uh, but yeah, super crisp. They're super stylized and uh, really, really pleasant to look at, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I'd love... Uh, I, so many games try to just make things look realistic or, quote, cartoony. I don't know. But uh, I love a game. I love it when a, uh, a game or any piece of media really finds its own its own uh, look or flavor to how it's gonna to its appearance and I think Adventure Island does a really good job with that it's attractive it's attractive it's unique and it's really good uh, really emphasizes the gameplay it's good good for the gameplay makes it easy to see what's going on on the screen oh my gosh and I love that you can see uh, so you play as Master Higgins in his uh, grass skirt and baseball cap I love that you can even on the tiny Game Boy screen you can see his belly button <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this game is, uh, is, so it's kind of a, I think it's kind of a, well, I was going to say it's a fast-paced action game. It's not that fast-paced, but unfortunately I think it's a little too fast-paced for the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, the DMG model, because I did see a lot of blurring on the screen, which made it pretty hard to see some of the obstacles that are coming up and to dodge them in time. Uh, of course, playing it on any uh, emulator or more modern uh, Game Boy console, you know, resolves that issue. The Game Boy Advance SP, anything past the original Game Boy will be crystal clear. But yeah, on the original one, it does make it pretty tricky. It's not unplayable, but pretty tricky. Uh, the music is uh, the music's really good. Um, it, it did get stuck in my head. Well, first of all, I never got tired of it, which is a good sign. Uh, I, it did get stuck in my hand, in my head, which means I was still humming it after the after I finished playing the game. But uh, I don't think it's anything I'd I don't think I'd go out of my way to add it to a uh, to my music playlist, uh, which means it's good music. It's just not the best of the best, which is fine. It's great music. Uh, so as I mentioned, this was a port from an NES game, uh, which unfortunately meant there was some uh, compromises to put on the Game Boy. Uh, namely, the screen is a lot, or the, the play area, the screen is a lot more zoomed in on the player character. On the NES, you got a nice big, uh, nice big player view area. Uh, on the Game Boy, it has to be zoomed in a lot, which means the screen scrolls up and down a lot, and you get a lot less view to the left and right. Well, I guess it's just the right in this game. You get a lot less, uh, you can see a lot less of what's coming up ahead of you, and you also can't see what's above or below you. I'm not positive, but I think in the NES version you can actually see everything on the screen at once. There's no vertical scrolling. Uh, but regardless, I mean, there's definitely going to be less of that if there is any. And uh, so this makes, uh, because the screen is so zoomed in, it does present some issues where, oh gosh, like uh, enemies or obstacles. Like, a, for example, there's a boulder. There's a, there's a level with a boulder. 
I started it up the level and within a few seconds a boulder comes a rock comes flying off the top of the screen and just hits me in the head like <laughs> how was I supposed to dodge that I don't know um, but you know after you're learning it once I knew it was coming and so I was able to prepare and dodge it prepare for it and dodge it uh, which I don't know kind of it could be argued that that's bad game design that you shouldn't the player shouldn't be forced to memorize a level memorize a game in order to enjoy it but in this case I think the whole flavor the whole feeling of Adventure Island is kind of I kind of got that vibe from it so you've got uh, there's short levels so picture Super Mario Brothers the levels are a lot shorter and uh, the, the only thing you can do is run to the right and jump um, there is uh, there is the option of picking up uh, weapons, which uh, I'll get to a little bit later. But most of the time, it's just run to the right and jump, which means, in a sense, it's kind of like a uh, an old school version of a runner game, like an infinite runner game. But as I mentioned, the levels are really short. Uh, there's no there's no halfway points or save points in the middle of the levels, and that's not needed because once again, the levels are very short, and so it's kind of cool. You started up uh, pretty quickly in the game uh, the levels start getting quite challenging uh, there are lots of obstacles that you need to dodge they all get thrown at you pretty quickly uh, sometimes guys will uh, as I mentioned so sometimes rocks will fall from the top sometimes guys will dash in from the left and they're really hard to dodge but uh, levels are designed quite well the level designers presented uh, all the enemies and the obstacles in a way that uh, they kind of come naturally and even when they don't like, I just kind of, like when I get when I get hit by a cheap shot, uh, I don't know, I don't find myself being too angry about it. Instead, I'm just, oh, you game developers, you level designers, <laughs> I see what you did there. And then I'm excited to try again and try to get through this level. Because, you know, they're really short. Um, quick, quick little uh, bite-sized levels. So, I can see what they did there. I think it works pretty well. Oh my gosh, there's this one enemy. Um, so speaking of the NES, the Game Boy conversion, uh, there's this one, I think he's a kangaroo. There's this one kangaroo enemy in this one level, or pretty early on in the game, that drove me absolutely crazy. I could not get past them. I tried dozens and dozens and dozens of times and could not get past them. And uh, like, <laughs> this is this is world one, like stage six or something. And I ended up doing a, you know, search online like how do I how do I uh, like what's the trick to getting past this guy because it can't be just me well I didn't find anything about stage six for Adventure Island 2 for Game Boy so uh, anyway <laughs> I loaded up I got a I was wondering how it worked since this was a conversion I was wondering how it worked in the original NES version I loaded up in the the NES game and play through the first few levels and get to this section and get to the stage in the in the original NES game and find out this bouncing kangaroo enemy is presented it's the same enemy but because of the NES and the bigger screen it is infinitely easier to dodge it's it's a world one enemy as opposed to holy crap I literally can't get by this <sighs> I did eventually get past them on the Game Boy version but yeah because of the conversion uh, between the NES and the Game Boy it was a lot, a lot harder than it should have been, which is unfortunate. In regards to the general gameplay, I think this applies to, so this applies to Adventure Island 2 for Game Boy, but I think, I don't know if it applies to the rest of the Adventure Island games. I, I, it's hard to explain. I, I didn't quite understand the basics of, well, maybe I'll just try to describe it. So, in Adventure Island, you start level one, and very quickly you pick up a power-up that allows you to throw axes. Uh, it's your basic weapon in the game. Now, when I can throw axes, I am almost invinci invincible. I mean, you can throw a lot of axes. You can rapid-fire axes and just constantly be chucking them as you're running through the level, and they destroy almost everything in your path. Uh, I get to the end of level, I get to keep the axe, and use it in the next level. And much of the time, even in harder levels, it, when I start the level with an axe, 
I can breeze through it, just blasting everything in my path with the axe. But, as soon as I get hit, accidentally get hit once, I die, I lose a life, and I start at the beginning of the level with no weapon. And the level is now almost impossibly hard. It's like, it's not impossibly hard, but wow, the jump in difficulty, the difference in difficulty between playing through a level with the axe weapon and without the axe weapon is ridiculously different. Now I assumed, you know, like when you play Super Mario Brothers, you start as small Mario and the game will pretty quickly, almost every level, very quickly you'll get a, a super mushroom and it's not too hard to even get a fire flower, whatever. Uh, but even if I didn't, I'd still be able to run and jump in Super Mario Brothers and basically play the level as it was designed and get to the end. In this game, I'm not convinced the developers intended for the player to get to the end of the level without any power-ups. It is incredibly hard compared to having when you do have a power-up. It's incredibly hard trying to get through a level without one. And it seems like most levels don't even provide you with a weapon. You can either start with one or you don't. Now I think you can go back to previous levels and grind to collect weapons in case you need them in the future. But yeah, if that's the case, oh, I don't know. Grinding to get weapons is eh, kind of a bad, bad game design choice. So I can't say I fully understand what they intended in regards to the weapons and being able to get through the levels without them. How, how the game was intended to play. Did the developers intend for you to play through the game always having a weapon? Or did they intend for you to be able to beat the levels and have fun without a weapon? And if you do have a weapon, it's just like a bonus? I don't know. Regardless, I was having fun. It was almost too easy with a weapon and almost too hard without a weapon, which is why I'm confused. Uh, ultimately though, it's a, it's a fun game and I did have fun with it. <laughs> I think my only uh, last thing I was thinking, I realized uh, my only, well, is it a gripe? <laughs> well, one thing I noticed is uh, if I had to change something, it was the, uh, the whole concept of extra lives in this game are absolutely, utterly pointless. So you start with three extra lives and <laughs> when you, uh, when you die, there's, there's no, when, when you die, you start at the end, of, and, uh, you start at the beginning of the level again. Uh, when you lose all three lives, there are exactly zero consequences, except for wasting your time a little bit. You go back, to, you get a game over screen and a password, and you go back to the, the title screen and you push start to continue, and you're exactly where you left off. I have... I haven't found any place in this game where extra lives make any difference. It's just, it's a relic of being a game from the 90s. It's gotta have extra lives, because that's what video games have. Uh, but yeah. But, uh, so, unfortunately, so, unfortunately, that does waste a little bit of time. But, uh, the good, good news is, it is, uh, it doesn't have any consequence. It doesn't, the game doesn't waste my time by by uh, giving me a game over screen and then starting me back uh, and then giving me a lot of punishment. I can just press start and try again. It just takes a few extra seconds. So as a minor annoyance, but I do applaud the uh, developers for kind of skirting around that issue with extra lives. Yeah, overall, spending a week playing this game has been a lot of fun. Uh, my first Adventure Island game, it's super cute, uh, great graphics, good music, uh, fun and quite unique gameplay. Uh, I was not able to beat it. Uh, it does get quite challenging. I might load up my, load it in my Game Genie and see if I can uh, just get to the end and see what it's like. But yeah, uh, I look forward to playing it more and I recommend it.